Okay, we are live uh, at 79th Street in New York City aboard the Hudson, uh, the Sloop Clearwater. Is that right? That's correct, yeah. And this is, and your name, sir? Uh, my name is Nick Rogers. Okay, and Nick, and also? Manna Joe Green. Nick's our captain. Oh, one okay. of them, yep. And Manna Joe, your role again with the organization? I'm the Environmental Action Director. Great. So, Nick, you're here to give us a tour of the Sloop Clearwater, which was actually originally built. Well, the original story is that they actually, the, the organization wanted to find and restore a sloop, um, which, you know, a lot of them didn't last uh, 100 years. So, so it was built, uh, it was launched in 1969, so it's our 50th anniversary as well as Pete's 100th birthday. So, um, and there's really not much to see on deck, which is pretty indicative of a sloop. They wanted these long open decks for cargo and just one single mast, um, which is a Dutch design to, uh, to catch the wind. Whether you're here in New York City in the Palisades or whether you're upriver uh, to the highlands or the foothills of the Catskills, there's uh, high mountains on all sides of the river. So one single tall mast is able to catch the, the wind that comes over those hills. So we're a replica of the cargo vessels that sailed this uh, river in the 1800s, the late 17 and 1800s. Now, Pete was involved, right? In, in Oh, very much so. that first replica sloop. Yeah, very much so. I mean, it wasn't actually his idea. It was if, uh, Vic Schwartz and some other folks had the idea. And very early on, Pete, Pete, Pete was involved for sure. But uh, And what was yeah. the vision of those who wanted to, to build this? Well, the vision, which is what I love to say, is like we do a pretty serious education program on board now, and I really enjoy it. But uh, the vision has always been literally just to get people down to the river. And once you get them out on the river, it's hard not to see how beautiful it is and then that beauty then translates into wanting to protect it so um, the original vision was just to get people onto the river and then let them make their own decisions about what they about what they think but I guarantee anybody that comes down the river is gonna think it's beautiful so. because the goal was to help clean up the Hudson River there was yeah. so much pollution right yeah back then the story that I've heard and that we passed around on the boat is that when Pete was living in Beacon and wanted to go swimming he would throw a rock into the water so that all the water would disperse and the pollutants would disperse and then he could jump in and before those dispersions, uh, the pollutants uh, came back, he would come back out and throw into the rock and hop back in. So. Wow. And so over the years, I know that the sloop has been restored, right? It's been restored as well. Yeah, we've done a lot a of restoration over the year. Yeah, the, the last 10 years have been a really heavy, um, heavy work in multiple uh, installments of, of restoring a lot of the, um, the deck and the hull and, and a, lot of, a lot of work's been done for sure. And education is so important when you're trying to get people's attention, right? And that's what the sloop is about. Get their attention, grab them, get them out on the water, as Nick said, and get them to appreciate, you know, the environment, the, the river, and uh, what's around them, right? Absolutely. And um, one of the things the educators do is they scoop out some of the living creatures from the river mm. and put them into a tank uh, and and let people see firsthand that it is a living river and that these beings have as much right to live and, and flourish as we do. Beautiful. And Nick's got a slice of the special birthday cake for Pete. Yep. And uh, Captain, please, uh, are you the captain? Is that right? Uh, yes. Yeah. The captain, please, take the uh, ceremonial bite. <laughs> By all means, I mean, it's a special day, and you Happy work year-round. Happy birthday, Pete. Yes. Do you want to, um, where, where would we go next? Um, I think something else to see is the, the below deck quarters. It's pretty, it's, it's pretty interesting. Just make sure you go backwards on the ladder, please. Okay, will do. Thank you. So we're getting a tour of the Sloop Clearwater that Pete Seeger and so many others built and we're going to go backwards as requested okay uh, welcome uh, this is our galley space where we have fed thousands over the years um, we pretty routinely have a crew of about uh, 14 to 18 people um, okay. so uh, people actually sleep yeah, the crew all sleeps on board. Sleeps yep. on board. Yep. Yep. How many months a year? Uh, we're sailing from um, the beginning of April, the early April, till the end of October. And how many people are on the crew? Uh, at any given time, there's usually between um, uh, 12 crew members and then four to six volunteers that sail with us each week. Um, okay. Which are really important. We can't we can't run the programs that we do 
uh, without our volunteers. They help, uh, they, they help do the education on board and they also help uh, in various parts of ship life. So some of the crew members are volunteers? Absolutely, yep. Wow, okay. These are the bunks that, that people sleep on. You have this much room wow. and you get used to it. <laughs> Very tight quarters. Yes, indeed. So if you're claustrophobic, it's got to get a little tricky, right? Yeah. I want to just also point out uh, the, um, I guess it starts here, right? Uh, this one here is where it right. starts. The story of sailing oh. on the Hudson River from First Nations with canoes and uh, not so much on the Hudson, but up north, kayaks. Can, can I just add something really quickly? I, I heard this amazing fact about the First Nations, is that since Henry Hudson sailed up the river in 1609, there have been 17 generations of people that have lived in the valley. Prior to 1609, there's records of over 400 generations of people wow. living in the valley. So I just find that absolutely fascinating. I don't mean to interrupt me. I'm no, sorry. No, absolutely. I just that find adds absolutely to it. And, and, and then the sloops. Wow. Or, no, actually, this precedes. The yeah, this is the replica of Henry Hudson's Half Moon. Yep. That's right. And then, wow. and then the sloops sail the cargo. Yeah. Oh wow, there they are. Yeah. And then uh, steamships. The... Steamships over here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then notice the one on the last one here. Mm -hmm. That's the Mobro garbage barge sailing around, filled with garbage, and no place, nobody wanted their garbage. Mm. And that was symbolic of the awakening of that we have to find a way to reduce, reuse, repair, recycle, and make less waste. Mm. So Pete and Toshi, uh, of all the many, many issues that they brought to the, to the forefront, I think one of them was teaching people to reduce, reuse, recycle, mm. and really became world renowned for that, as as well as all of the other uh, great contributions. And you knew P and his wife Toshi. Yes. And of course, they were a real team working together. Absolutely. And I see that you've got the guitar on the wall, and it was really all about. Uh, music uh, uh, delivering a message to inspire people, right, to action. Absolutely. Pete greatly understood the power of song and um, used that to awaken and inspire people. Uh, people might have come down to the river because there was a beautiful sloop, but when you add the music, mm. it's irresistible. You're locked. All right. Nick, what's next? Well, I mean, anything else? No, that's, I think. And, and that's oh, this just is, the, this is the captain's cabin. Oh, captain's cabin. Can we get a little sure. sneak peek? Sure. Uh, we get a little bit more space in here. Okay. Um, you know, desk to do some work and uh, you know, wow. a, a library of information. And how long have you been the captain? Uh, this will be my eleventh season. Wow. What's it been like? I, uh, amazing. I mean, I think that oftentimes people ask me why I've stayed so long or why I keep coming back to this boat rather than working on other boats. And it's really just the community of people that are involved with this boat. I mean, a lot of, you can sail a tall ship in a lot of different parts of the world, but it's pretty rare to have such a strong community um, involved and related to the vessels. And what about the cause? How do you feel about, you know, inspiring people to to think about this and help clean up the Hudson? Uh, well, I, another reason I, I really like this boat is that uh, we do education. We're not just focused on the history uh, of things, but, uh, and and so education's always been, I, I tried to be a high school teacher when I graduated college. Mm. It didn't work out so well. So I found other ways to do education and, and again, just kept coming back here. So. And, you, and, and when people come on the boat, they, I'm sorry, on the on the vessel. What's the right time? Sloop. Sloop. Sorry. Yeah. Um, they're you're putting them to work, right? I mean, it's part of the experience. Yeah, we we can't do it by ourselves, and so we ask to help uh, set the sails and and whatever else it it, it takes. Yeah. Steer the boat for sure. Yeah, I read a, a great article, a tribute to Pete in Billboard magazine this morning, and uh, the reporter wrote, and I'm going to try to paraphrase because I'm not going to remember the exact quote, but it was like. In order for us to move forward, we all need to pull together. I think that was the headline of the story. And so moving, you know, because it's so true whether you're whether you're on a sloop or in this country, right? In order for us to move together. And I think that was the message behind the music. There were a lot of messages in those songs. That really encapsulates it. So is there anything else that you were going to share? Just now? Well, I think the... the uh as as our uh, executive director Greg 
William said a few minutes ago, participation. And, and that's the same theme, yeah. that if, um, if people wait and let someone else do it, it's mm -hmm. not going to get done. Mm. But if we all do our share collectively, we can make a huge difference. And right now, we not only need to continue to protect and clean up the Hudson River, but we're in the middle of a global climate crisis. And ever, more than ever, we need to be working together mm. to solve that. Yeah, and you know, we're streaming this live to the Harry Chapin Foundation Facebook page, and Harry always said that Pete was one of his heroes. And Pete was so involved in so many causes yeah. that, but he really believed, as you just said, and as Harry always believed, that every person can make a difference. We have to do something. You can't sit back and wait for other people to do it. And so with the Sloop Clearwater, what kinds of ways can people get involved if they want to support the organization? Oh, so many ways. <laughs> um, as Nick said, uh, first of all, volunteer for a week to sail because um, the crew itself can use the help raising the 3,000 pound sail and also the teaching stations and everything that they do. Um, they can come to our festival. Uh, which, which is coming up in mid-June. Coming up June 15th okay. and 16th this year. It's the Great Hudson River Revival at Croton Point Park. And just if you want to find out more, it's clearwaterfestival.org. And um, at that festival, we carry on the tradition of collecting signatures and influencing lawmakers uh, on various different issues. For example, we are opposing the building of um, a gas-fired uh, uh, energy facility at Danscammer, a peninsula in the Hudson mm. that's only going to get flooded out with sea level rise and storm surges. So we'll have a petition about that. We'll have a petition to further clean up the PCBs out of the Hudson mm. River and to ensure the safest possible decommissioning mm. with a just transition for the workers at Indian Point. Mm. These are one of the many petitions that people can sign and I feel like, you know, that's part of the Seeger legacy is that the very first sloop was out on the river collecting petitions, and we are today. But there's so many other things, five solar-powered stages and all kinds of activities uh, for people of all ages and interests. So, and clearwater.org is the website. Our website is clearwater.org and there's um, a specific website for information on the festival and it's clearwaterfestival.org. And Nick, I'll just ask you before we close here, you've been 11 seasons as the captain of the sloop. What life lessons have you taken from this experience? <laughs> uh, I guess just uh, this, this theme that just keeps coming up, you know, participation and teamwork. I mean, it's just like when you come out on the boat, uh, it, the you, you don't have to need you don't need to be reminded of those things. Those things uh, speak so prevalent in all the work that we do that it's just at the end of the day you look back and you're just like, oh, that's why it worked. And so, do you feel like you're making a difference? Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know. You've got to be an optimist, right? You got to hope yeah. you are. Right? I, I mean, I. Yeah, I mean, I feel like we're making a really big difference, whether it's with one fourth grader or whether it's it, it's it's with the whole state or, or with the whole estuary. I mean, I just like it's hard not to feel like, um, you know, like I said, the sense of community really supports you around here. So. Yeah, and you know, and I think of um, what Harry Belafonte once said in um, accepting an award for We Are the World and how he was inspired by Harry Chapin, who was inspired by Pete Seeger, that it was like. Um, Chapin had thrown a pebble in a pond and it created ripples mm -hmm. and those ripples keep going and they keep inspiring people and I think that's how I like to think of Pete and Toshi and what all of you are doing one person at a time one student at a time one community member at a time coming aboard the sloop Clearwater learning about what you all are trying to teach them and then maybe just inspiring some of them to get involved because if you change one life those ripples keep going. So thank you all for all that you do and uh, keep it up. I want to just add one thing and that's persistence. You know, we, we sometimes think that we'll solve things overnight and, and it, one of the things that I've learned uh, for the many years I've been here, to get 
the PCBs cleaned up out of the upper Hudson River as, as best we could was a 40-year project. Uh, and, um, and many of these things take patience, so it's not, it is working together, but it's not just working together. It's doing what we can and having uh, the understanding that you know, look how long it took to get the Civil Rights Bill passed. And even with the Civil Rights Bill passed, there's still more work to do. And that's true, as, as true as ever, about the environment. And we'll close with this last question. What lesson have you learned from Pete's life? Well, uh, I would say that, and also the importance of communicating with everyone, the people you agree with, and even the people you disagree with, because we're all... 99% alike, and we tend to focus on our differences rather than our commonality. And um, and also, I've learned the importance of love. Thank you both so much. Keep it up. Thank you. Bye now.